how rich I think you have to be to own a 987 Cayman. engineered 
So next up on the list of things to repair or replace on the car was its tyres. So I did a whole video on this, so if you've already seen it, you'll know that the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's that I got fitted to the car cost £820 fitted. So again, a lot of money for tyres, let's be honest. It's the most I've ever spent on tyres. But these are running the 19-inch wheels and they're really, really wide, so they are expensive. And it is a Porsche, so you're going to be paying a lot of money for tyres and they're not going to last very long. So I've yet to see how long these will last, but so far, so good. They're absolutely brilliant. But yeah, £820 for those. The other expense that you do have with this car, particularly in 3.4S of this year, is very expensive road tax. So it's nearly £600 a year, and because it's such a massive amount of money, I do pay it monthly. I just feel that that just makes it seem a lot less bad. So it's £50 a month, essentially, which is a lot for road tax. My car insurance is very, very cheap. I know everyone's circumstances are totally different, but I'm 32, it's parked on a driveway, and I've got like five years of no claim, so, and, and no points on my license. So that's only about £23 a month or something like that. It's very, very cheap. So overall, during the 13 months of owning this car, I have spent £2,000. £600 on it. When you think, when you divide that up into months, that's 200 quid a month. And for a Porsche, I think that's really, really good. And that includes your insurance and your tax. The only thing is fuel. And if I was to work that out, it would be quite upsetting to me because it just go through fuel like crazy. I mean, it's only averaging 21 now and it doesn't really improve on that. It only gets worse, to be honest, the more you put your foot down. So fuel is an expensive thing that you're going to have to get used to when buying one of these. So when people have said in the comments, well you shouldn't have bought a Porsche if you didn't want expensive bills, well there's a few bills that I have had and I'm quite happy with them. They would seem like a lot to some people but to me I think it's fairly reasonable. Now the issue I have with this car is that it's going into the garage at the end of this month. It's going into Strasa in Leeds to have its engine rebuilt due to ball scoring. Now they have quoted between five and a half and six thousand pound. So that just goes to show really that although two hundred pound a month running costs on a Cayman is actually really reasonable, you can suddenly get a bill between five and a half and six thousand pound at the drop of a hat, which I have just proven that can just happen. And that I would say is what you've got to be wary of and be aware of when you're looking at buying a Porsche because it's all right thinking, oh, it's only gonna cost me 200 pound a month in running costs, I don't mind the road tax, that's not that expensive, and the insurance may well be cheap, as it is for me, but it's the unexpected bills that you can get. We can all research part prices for tires, for brakes, suspension, and that type of stuff, and you can really get a general picture on how it is to run. And if you just look at those things with this car, it's actually really reasonable. Before this engine rebuild lark, this car really didn't cost me very much at all, and literally nothing has gone wrong with it. It's been absolutely fine. It continues to be fine. So even though its engine needs rebuilding and it's got ball scoring, the only symptom I've got is quite a lot of oil being burned. Nothing else has gone wrong with the car. Actually, yeah, something else has gone wrong. I've snapped a spring, but that's beside the point because it's all going into the garage anyway, so I'm not really going to be bothered talk talking about that. The other day also, you'll have seen in my previous video, I fitted a, the new switches to my air conditioning units, which is brilliant. They're, they're amazing, and they're a very expensive part. They're about 60 quid. So, yeah, but I think they're worth it. They do make such a difference. I then asked people about swapping the buttons around, the volume buttons. Well, I had a bit of a brain fart, if you can call it one of them. Someone told me to soak it in alcohol. So I took them off, and I soaked them in alcohol. But you're only meant to sort of wipe them gently with alcohol, not soak them. So anyway, I've melted them. So as you can see, they look absolutely horrendous. So yeah, both my volume buttons are totally ruined. I'm gonna have to order some new ones. And I went online. I posted it up on the Facebook group for the Porsche 987. And a lot of people were suggesting how to clean it, but what they didn't realize is I've melted them. So that, that doesn't matter anyway, I just need replacements. A lot of people suggested where to buy them. When I clicked the links, I was really, really shocked actually. I found these were nearly 40 quid. 40 quid each. So I put up saying, well, I'm not paying 40 quid each. You know, I'll, 
is there anyone does anyone know if any VW ones fit because they look exactly the same as a VW one so I was asking around if any of those fit or if there's anywhere cheaper and someone obviously put the usual comment oh you've got a Porsche did you not expect big bills yes I did but I'm not paying 60 quid for two tiny bits of plastic that's an absolute joke and that's what I mean with Porsches you don't mind the huge bills provided you're getting value from them I feel that five and a half to six grand is quite good value for an engine rebuild, and a lot of people have said that. That's due to having steel liners, but that's for another video. But little tiny bits of plastic for 60 quid, they're the bits that really get you. They're the bits that really annoy you, make you realise that owning a Porsche could turn out quite expensive, especially if you want to modify it. Um, luckily someone did point out if you go to the Porsche Centre they sell them for about a tenner each so I'm going to contact my Porsche Centre which is in Hull and get in touch with them and see if I can go and pick some of those up because as you can see that they're, they're just disgusting now I can't I can't cope with these it's horrible absolutely horrible and before I forget I am still doing a Q&A so that will be one of the next few videos that's coming out I've got quite a lot of questions that people want answering and I'm going to do a QA and a on my, one of my next videos so if you have any questions at all for me so literally anything don't hold back I will get one of my friends in the car we'll probably have a little drive through McDonald's maybe play a bit of McDonald's roulette classic YouTuber and uh, I'll answer your questions as best I can so just drop them in the comments and let me know that it's for the Q&A and I'll do my best to answer it in an upcoming video. Those of you who are regular viewers of this channel will see that I'm currently borrowing VW Polo Blue GT. It's an absolutely brilliant car and I've done a review on it and I've also got a video coming out. I don't know whether it'll be out before or after this one, depends how I feel. Um, but that's where I've taken it up to Scotland so that's a really good video so make sure you watch that one as well. I know a lot of you aren't going to be interested in <laughs> An economical polo but I'd really appreciate it if you just all watched it and let me know what you think because I can't just keep doing videos on Caymans I have to branch out and if small economical cars are really not for you guys then I'll probably avoid them but I thought as soon as I've got the car I may as well do a little quick video on it so that will be probably the next video that goes out after this one but just a quick reminder to anyone that hasn't already subscribed to this channel, please, if you could hit that subscribe button, it really would mean a lot. I'm really, really pushing to get to the 1,000 subscriber milestone. And make no mistake, I'm doing it so that I'm able to monetize this channel. Because the car is going into the garage and it's going to be a huge bill. The huge bill would also be a result of doing amazing videos. I'll be able to do amazing videos while it's in the garage. But I am going to get a huge bill at the end of it. So if you want to see the rebuild process of this car, which will probably span over about five different episodes, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I know there's a lot of people that do watch my videos that aren't subscribed, and I really, really need to convert those people into watching it. But thank you so much for everyone that's taken the time to watch my videos and subscribe, because I'm over 800 subscribers now, and that, it's just amazing. I cannot believe it. It is extremely flattering because I think I'm totally boring, but yeah. Hopefully you're enjoying this video. If you are, if you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for plenty more videos like this one to come. So with all that being said, how rich do you really have to be to own a Porsche Cayman 987? Well, I don't think you have to be very rich at all. You need to be an enthusiast and you need to be willing to spend the money on some of the larger bills that can come your way. You need to be willing to spend a little bit of money on small bits of plastic that cost £40 each. And you also need to be prepared that if the worst comes to it, you could be looking at a bill between five and six grand for an engine rebuild. That's something you're not going to get with your everyday run-of-the-mill cars like Ford Fiestas, Hondas and all that sort of jazz. So, yeah, you don't have to be rich, but I think you do have to be committed. You have to be an enthusiast, and it's why I own this car. A lot of people have asked if I daily drive this car. Well, I do daily drive it, more or less. I'm not going to be using it to travel to my new job because it's 100 miles a day and I'm just not prepared to put that kind of mileage on it and the fuel bill will be astronomical. But I do, in general, the daily drive it. We go to the shops in it, we do all sorts in it. So I do daily drive it and yeah, I don't think you have to be that rich to have one. 
when you consider how much I paid for the car, and he paid 14 grand for it, that's not really an expensive car these days, especially with the latest financing options available. But having said that, with some of the financing deals that you can get at the moment, it probably is cheaper to own a brand new sort of Golf R than it is to own one of these because you're able to get really, really good monthly payments on something really quick. And you're probably not gonna have the reliability issues that are likely to come up with this and a lot cheaper to run as well. So it is quite an expensive car. But I don't believe you have to be super wealthy to own it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's given you a bit of an insight into what it's like to own a Porsche Cayman 987, and whether or not you need to be rich to have one. I don't feel you do, but some, and especially in the comment section, feel that you do really need to be. You have to be extremely wealthy. This is not a Bugatti Veyron, it's a Porsche Cayman, and I absolutely love it. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.